Good evening. I'm delighted to talk with you tonight. First, let me share a dirty little secret. Math class is not as fun as science class. <laughs> Controversial, I know. The problem is, I'm a math teacher and passionate about it. Those of you who are science teachers likely enjoy designing ex classroom experiments that engage your students in discussion where you unpack their observations. I remember one such experiment my first year teaching where I put food coloring in cups of cold and hot water. My sixth graders watched, fascinated, as the, cold, as the color spread more quickly in the hot water. In an animated discussion, we talked about brewing tea in hot water and ultimately discussed the impact of temperature on the speed of molecules. They were fascinated and they were engaged. They were really excited to be there. Later that day, I taught those same students a math lesson. <laughs> they showed much less interest in adding fractions with unlike denominators. <laughs> Class became a battle. I spent all of my energy trying to get students to do the math while they spent all of their energy trying to distract me and avoid doing math. What are you doing this weekend, Mr. G? They asked. Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have any kids? When asked a personal question, I stonewalled with, that's off topic, or that's irrelevant. <laughs> I thought I was keeping them on task. But what I didn't realize was that some of my students were genuinely curious about who I was as a person, and they were trying to connect with me, and I was rebuffing their efforts. This leads me to the challenge that we face. How do we provide students with experiences in math class that engage their curiosity and promote rich discussions? My principal advised, just make your lessons more engaging. <laughs> but how, I asked. I hadn't learned how to do that in grad school. Meanwhile, my students seemed overly curious about me and uninterested in the math. I had an epiphany my second year teaching when I was teaching a perfectly boring lesson about converting temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. My coach observed that while it was true students were plugging numbers into the formulas, they had no motivation. It was sheer drudgery. She suggested an alternative. What if I had launched the day's lesson with a story? Suppose I said I'd gone to Canada, checked the weather, and it was 20 degrees out. I bundled up tight, expecting it to be bitterly cold, but when I got outside, I was sweating. <laughs> what do you think had happened? This would pique my students' interest and elicit from them that I had interpreted a temperature in Celsius as Fahrenheit. Now, we had a reason to learn how to convert temperature, so we wouldn't make the same mistake Mr. G made on his Canadian trip. Using storytelling to hook students and help them learn math was a brand new idea for me. Immediately, I found it highly effective. The first time I tried it, my students were more attentive and enthusiastic than I had ever seen them before. And so, I became a storytelling teacher. The purpose of my stories wasn't to share the literal truth about my experiences, but rather to cultivate rapport with my students and develop a reason for the mathematics. I leveraged student curiosity about me to engage them in math before they even realized we were solving math problems. Let me show you how I launched one problem last year. Who here likes bagels? Go on, raise your hands. <laughs> Lots of you, me too. We're really lucky because we live in New York City 
home to the world's best bagels. Sadly, my bubby does not live in New York City. She lives in Connecticut, where they don't have such great bagels. So, like any good grandson, every time I visit, I bring her bagels from New York. Unfortunately, one time, I had to visit her on a Monday, when my local bagel store is closed. So I couldn't bring her any bagels. Let me tell you, she never let me forget about it. <laughs> Every subsequent visit, she would ask, did you remember to bring the bagels this time? Can you believe he forgot to bring the bagels? So, to make sure that this would never happen again, I did a little bit of research, and I found two really good bagel stores in my neighborhood, and both are open on Mondays. Can you all help me figure out where I would get the better deal the next time I go to bring my bubby bagels? My students really got on board with this problem. As I monitored student discussion, I heard lots of conversations about their favorite bagel store. Students analyzed each other's methods for determining which store offered the better deal. They were seeing mathematics as a powerful tool to solve problems in their daily life. At the end of the year, I asked my students to write me a letter and share with me any advice they had and how they would like me to remember them. One student wrote, Now, as for any advice, I liked how you would often turn your stories into math problems. It makes the math more fun. I want you to remember me as the student who reminded you that you forgot to bring your grandma bagels that one time. <laughs> Thanks, kid. That story had stuck with him through subsequent units, and he recalled it as the thing he wanted to, me to remember about him. Clearly, my stories resonated with him. In building relationships with students, I'm drawing upon what I know about relationships in general. In therapy, there's a term for using yourself to create empathy and relationships with your patients a therapeutic use of self. I propose that teaching needs to coin its own term, a pedagogical use of self. A pedagogical use of self is when you strategically embed yourself into the curriculum through stories that will captivate students and cultivate a community of mathematicians or scientists in your classroom. Such sharing about yourself will strengthen your relationships with your students. Your curriculum will come to life. Your students will get to know you, and you'll draw them into your subject matter. By using my life pedagogically, I model for students what mathematics can do for anyone and show them how math can be a tool to help us examine, make sense of, and evaluate our own lives. In eight years of teaching, I've evolved from following the lie, don't smile until Christmas, <laughs> and worrying about staying on task, to spending the whole first day of school getting to know who my students are and introducing myself to them. Everything from the dog I have to the absurd number of board games I own. <laughs> By sharing my truths with the students, I build trust and inspire them to share their truths with me. As a result, I am currently experiencing powerful, vibrant relationships with my students and enjoying seeing some of them develop a passion for math. I hope my evolution has inspired you to embrace a pedagogical use of self as a valuable tool in your own classrooms. Ask yourself, what are your Bubby's bagel stories? Thank you.